Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Rex here, and welcome back to another quick tutorial, and today what we're going to be doing is going over some random generation in Game Maker. And really quick, before you guys ask, or if you guys are even wondering, uh, why the sprite slash object is named obj slash sbr enemy, uh, that's basically just because I'm going to do a later tutorial on enemy spawns because someone requested that as well along with this one. So I just thought because I was making this engine anyway for enemy spawns that this would be a good enough starting point to actually fulfill the random generation tutorial that I need to do uh, because someone also requested it. So that's why they're both named that it has nothing to do with actual enemies, at least not in this tutorial. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is how that goes. Anyway, let's go ahead and quickly run the game here to give you guys a brief rundown of what's going to go down for this tutorial. So, as you can see here, I have a little room here, and there's my object, and I've set it up so that if I press the R key, the room restarts. And let's go ahead and just press it a couple times here. And you'll notice each time I press the R key, our little object here happens to spawn in a completely different area whilst keeping inside the room. And the reason for that is because I've set up a little code so that it makes it so every single time the room restarts, he obviously goes to a different area while keeping within the parameters of the actual room itself. Now, I'm also going to show you guys at the end how to make it so when he randomly spawns, he can only randomly spawn either at the top or the side of the screen as well, just in case you guys happen to want something like that. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into Game Maker and see how this is all done. So, uh, I want to go ahead and quickly go over the sprite here because I know a lot of people in a lot of tutorials are usually kind of curious about this sort of thing, noticing if there's any, or wanting to uh, know if there's any kind of uh, restraints with the sprites that kind of will make it so it doesn't work, the tutorial or whatever. And uh, I'm happy to tell you that no, you can do whatever you want to heck, or whatever the heck you wanted to um, with the sprite here. It doesn't matter what the size is, what it looks like, you can really just do whatever <laughs> you feel like doing with it. Um, and it will not affect how the spawning kind of goes over. Now, in the actual objects here of our little enemy, uh, you'll notice there's nothing in here, and you can really put whatever the heck you want to put in there. It won't matter either. It won't change the way that the spawning goes. Uh, basically, all we're doing here, and the reason that we separated out the two objects here, the obj underscore spawn and the actual enemy, is because it, it's really flexible in that kind of system. So basically, this will spawn the object, and then the actual object itself, you can make it do whatever you want to do, instead of just doing it all in one object. So that's the reason that they're separated, and it's, it's good to keep it that way. So uh, obviously in here, as you guys already probably know, uh, in the key press R event, uh, it just has a simple room restart, uh, just to show you guys for testing purposes. That is not needed for this tutorial. Uh, but what is needed, however, is in the create event, and you can do it whatever event you want to do it, but I just put it in the create event, uh, this code right here, I know it looks a bit hefty right now, uh, is basically going to be a random generation code. And it's basically instance create, and then in these parentheses, uh, we have the coordinates, so random, and then room width, and then a little comma here, random room height, and then of course comma for our, uh, ob our object, excuse me, our obj enemy in this case. And um, basically in here you just put the name of the object you want to be randomly generated. But in here, um, these are coordinates. So this is our x coordinate and this is our y coordinate. Now, I've already showed you guys that when I actually run the game, these coordinates make it so he can spawn just all around the room. If you want him to spawn, say, only on the top or only on the side, uh, you go ahead and inside where it says room height and just type zero. Uh, so now, what he'll do, we only have room width over here, if I go and run the game, you'll notice that he only spawns on the very top. Now, if I keep pressing R, he'll just randomly spawn, but only on the top of the area. So that is basically how you do it here. Uh, if you want to go ahead and uh, do the same thing for this, maybe you want him to only spawn the side, just go ahead and let's see. So this is X, so it should be height. I didn't spell that right, did I? <laughs> no, I did not. There we wait, what? I'm sure I wait, hang on. Am I not? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's getting a little uh, getting a little I don't know, delirious there. It's really warm today. Alright, we'll do height. Height. There we go. <laughs> My wonderful typing skills in like 90 degree weather in like an even hotter house. Oh my goodness. So anyways, there we go. <laughs> Let's go ahead and keep pressing R here. Now he just continuously spawns on the side. So that guys and girls and other, I guess, uh, that are watching, that is how you do random generation. Uh, well, I took four, almost five minutes in this tutorial. That's kind of bad actually. I wanted to do a lot less, but whatever. 
that's basically what it is. And so hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully it helped you out. And uh, I guess until next time, feel free to comment, rate, maybe even subscribe for upcoming updates and future videos and such. And until then, this has been Rex Furry. And uh, as always, I'll see you guys next video.